Passive heating is mainly considered in small, skin load dominated buildings in colder climates. Of the eight climate zones defined by the International Energy Conservation Code, four have annual heating degree days above 5,400, and they have greater potentials to be considered as the typical climate zones for passive solar heating. Diurnal temperature range is another parameter considered for passive heating. It is the difference between the daily maximum and minimum temperatures. In the U.S., there is a high diurnal temperature variation in the continental areas, but low in maritime areas. For buildings with rectangular floor plans, the massing should be elongated on the east-west axis so that the main elevations are facing south and north to maximize the south-facing exposure and the number of south-facing windows. Overhands or other shading devices should be provided to shade the south-facing glazing from the summer sun. In passive solar houses, the communal spaces with the greatest heating and lighting requirements, such as the living and dining rooms, should be placed in the south-facing zone of the building. Spaces that are less used, such as storage, bathroom, garage, should be placed in the north or west-facing zones so that they can act as a buffer from the cold north side in the winter and the western solar gain in the summer. To achieve high passive solar performances, south windows should not be shaded during the heating season by other buildings or trees from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day. Obstructions such as buildings and trees to the south of the building needs to be located at a distance of at least two times their height away from the south windows. It is desirable to use evergreen trees and plantings to shelter the building from cold winds, usually coming from the northwest. Deciduous trees should be planted to the south and southwest sides to provide shading in the summer while letting solar radiation penetrate full in the winter. In general, compact forms minimize heat loss by having smaller envelope area per square foot. To make a building more compact, designers should avoid having too many ins and outs in the floor plate. Both of these buildings have the same square footage, but building B has 50% more skin area than building A, thus having a significantly higher heating load. By sharing the end walls, townhouses provide a more efficient building form than duplex or detached housing. There can be a 20 to 30 percent reduction in heat loss and heat gain through the building envelope. A lot of heat is required to change the temperature of high density materials such as concrete and masonry. They are considered to have a high thermal mass. The abilities of some common materials to absorb and store heat energy are listed in this table. In a passive solar home, a high thermal mass material such as concrete, brick, stone, or tile regulates the indoor temperature by flattening the temperature swing to improve comfort and save energy. A low mass passive solar building will experience a large indoor temperature swing during a winter day. Because of the large temperature fluctuation in this example, the indoor temperature of only a few hours falls into the comfort zone. Thermal lag, the time delay between outdoor and indoor peak temperatures, is small. A high mass passive solar building will experience a small indoor temperature swing during a winter day. Because the curve is flattened, the indoor temperature of more hours falls into the comfort zone than in a lightweight building. This effect is especially significant in a region with a high diurnal temperature range. The thermal lag in this case is large because there is a longer delay in the stored heat being released from the thermal mass material. Direct gain is the simplest and most widely used form of passive solar heating. In heating seasons, sunlight emitted through south-facing windows strikes the thermal mass which absorbs and stores the solar heat during the day 
without significantly raising the indoor temperature. As the temperature drops during the night, the thermal mass gradually releases the heat into the space to keep it warm. In cooling seasons, the thermal mass elements absorb heat during the day, lowering the room temperature. On summer nights, the thermal mass gradually releases the heat stored during the day. Natural ventilation, especially in dry climates, can emit cool and dry air to take the heat away to the outside. An indirect gain system has its thermal mass, the trunk wall, placed immediately behind the south-facing window, forming an air cavity in between. In heating seasons, solar energy is emitted through the glazing and absorbed by the wall during the day by means of the greenhouse effect and stored as heat. Operable vents at the top and bottom of the trunk wall are open during the day to facilitate heat convection between the heated air cavity and the living space. At night, the vents are closed and the wall releases the heat into the space to keep the interior space warm. In cooling seasons, the south-facing glazing needs to be protected by shading elements so that the air space is not overheated. The heat stored in the trunk wall is released at night and can be removed by night purge ventilation. Isolation gain collects solar energy in a space separate from the main building, a sun space with a thermal mass wall in between. In heating seasons, sunlight heats up the space through the greenhouse effect. The openings between the sun space and the main building are opened to allow for convective heat flow. At night, the openings between the two spaces are closed off, and heat transfers from the thermal mass wall to the main space. In cooling seasons, during the day, the operable vents on the sun space glazing should be opened at the top and bottom to create a stack effect to avoid heat buildup. At night, natural ventilation purges the heat stored in the thermal mass wall through cross ventilation. When wind moves towards a building and strikes the facade, a positive pressure is created on the windward wall and a negative pressure on the leeward side of the building. There is also a small negative pressure at the facades on the sides. Air always moves from positive pressure to negative pressure. The best window placement for cross ventilation is to place windows in the walls facing the prevailing breeze highest positive pressure, and in the opposite direction, highest negative pressure. Placing windows in the walls facing the prevailing breeze and on a side facade is acceptable. Placing windows in the same wall, either windward or leeward, is not recommended due to the lack of pressure difference. The maximum width that one could expect to ventilate naturally is estimated at 45 feet. Operable clear sewer windows and transoms should be provided to facilitate cross ventilation in buildings with deep floor plates and partitions in the way of air movement. Cross ventilation can be maximized by placing the main building facade perpendicular to the summer prevailing winds. Stack ventilation uses Bruyensis effect and Bernoulli's principle of fluid dynamics. When the temperature of a fluid increases, its density decreases. The lighter hot air then flows in the denser cold air. This is a Bruyensis effect that provides uplifting force to hot air due to temperature difference. Bernoulli's effect provides uplifting force by pressure difference. When air travels at higher speeds, its static pressure decreases. For example, in this air tube, air moves faster through the narrow portion of the tube, creating a negative pressure to draw air in from the inlet. In cooling seasons, the indoor warm air rises upwards towards the roof due to the buoyancy effect. The sloped roof forces the air to move faster toward the ridge, creating a lower pressure which also draws air from the attic up through the ridge vent. 
The stack ventilation can be enhanced by using a stack ventilation chimney with a high exterior exhaust outlet. It provides a pathway for the air and can help increase performance. The hot air exits the building at the high vent and cooler air is drawn in through lower openings. As water evaporates, it draws heat from the surrounding air, thereby creating a cooling effect. Evaporative cooling is an effective passive cooling method in hot and dry climates, as dry air has a greater capacity to take up water vapor. This diagram shows a passive downdraft evaporate cooling tower, which is a form of evaporate cooling. It runs hot and dry outside air through a wet pad medium at the top of the cooling tower. After running through the pads, the cool air becomes heavier and moves downward to cool the interior space. Wind is not required, but it will certainly increase the airflow. The roof pump concept was pioneered by Harold Hay in the 1970s. The goal was to use water's high thermal storage capacity and solar energy to cool and heat the building. In cooling seasons, the pump or water containers is covered during the daytime by removable insulation panels to stay away from the hot summer sun. In the meantime, water acts as thermal mass to store the heat from the indoor space to keep the interior cool. At night, the insulation cover is removed and water is exposed to the night sky to radiate the heat collected during the day to the sky. In heating seasons, the process is reversed. Water is uncovered during daytime to collect and store solar heat. It is covered by removable insulation panels at night and the heat stored in the water is radiated to the interior spaces. One of the prototypes based on this concept was built in California, the Skytherm House. When sunlight is incident on a surface, such as a roof surface, some of the energy is reflected, some absorbed. The fraction of the solar energy reflected is defined as solar reflectance. High reflective surfaces stay cooler than low reflective surfaces. Thermal emittance is another property of a roof material, defined as the ability of a material to ra radiate absorbed heat as long wave infrared energy. A higher thermal emittance indicates that the material emits the absorbed thermal energy more quickly than the material with a lower emittance. A cool roof calls for both high solar reflectance and high thermal emittance, so that during the hot summer days, high reflectance helps shield the roof from receiving too much solar energy, and high emittance helps re-radiate thermal heat from the roof to the outside sky. During the night, the roof absorbs heat from the warm interior and radiates the heat out to the cool night sky. This radiation effect is especially effective if the night sky is clear without clouds. Research has shown that white or light colored membrane roofing materials, such as the TPO roof, tend to provide excellent cooling performance. On a hot summer day, the surface temperature of a roof can reach well over 100 degrees F. Without a radiant barrier, the hot roofing structure radiates heat into the attic, and the temperature inside the attic can be as high as 150 to 160 degrees F. Radiant barrier, a material with high reflectance and low emissivity, such as polished foil sheet, can be installed under the hot roofing structure to prevent heat from being radiated further into the attic. A radiant barrier can be installed directly on the sheeting, but installing it on the interior of the roof framing will perform better at reducing heat transfer because it has an airspace on both sides.